Hello friends, this video on current electricity part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 18 before going ahead with this part. The first problem says that a potential difference of 200 volts is applied across the ends of a conductor of resistance 5, resistance 50 ohms. Calculate the number of electrons flowing through it in one second. Let us suppose we have a conductor. Let us say this is a conductor. A potential difference is applied across this conductor which is say 200 volts. And this conductor has a resistance of 50 ohms. So we have to calculate the number of electrons which will flow through this conductor in one second. So basically here the potential difference is given as 200 volts and the resistance is given as 50 ohms. So using these data we can calculate the amount of current which will flow through the conductor. Using Ohm's law we can say that V is equal to IR. So from this we can calculate the amount of current that is V divided by R which is equal to 200 divided by 50. So that is 4 amperes. That means 4 amperes of current will flow through this conductor. We have to calculate the number of electrons which will flow through it in one second. Now we define current as charge per unit time. And how do we define charge? Charge is nothing but number of electrons flowing into the charge on each electron. So this is equal to Ne divided by T. So from this we can calculate the number of electrons which is flowing through it. So N will be equal to I into T divided by E where I is the amount of current flowing through the conductor which is 4 amperes. Time is 1 second because we want to calculate the number of electrons in 1 second. So this will be 1 divided by the charge on each electron which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. So this value comes out to be 2.5 into 10 to the power 19. So these many electrons will flow through the conductor in one second. Now let us look at the next problem. It says that in the Bohr model of hydrogen atom, the electron circulates around the nucleus in a path of radius 5.1 into 10 to the power minus 11 meters at a frequency of 6.8 into 10 to the power 15 revolutions per second. Calculate the equivalent current. So it says that let us suppose this is the nucleus and this is my electron. So the electron revolves around the nucleus that is it circulates around the nucleus in a path of radius. The radius of the path is given as let us say r. So this radius is given as 5.1 into 10 to the power minus 11 meters. Now the frequency at which the electron moves is 6.8 into 10 to the power 15 revolutions per second. So we have to calculate the value of current. So how much current will be produced due to the motion of these electrons. So we know that Current is defined as charge per unit time. What is the charge in this case? In this case, the charge is nothing but the charge carried by the electron. Because here we are considering only one electron. In case of hydrogen atom, there is only one electron. So this will be the charge carried by electron divided by time taken. So what is that we have to calculate? We have to calculate the time taken by the electron to complete one revolution. Right? So this T is nothing but the time taken by the electron to complete one revolution, right? So the time taken to complete one revolution will be the distance traveled or the distance covered by the electron in one revolution divided by the speed of the electron, right? So what is the distance traveled in one revolution? It is nothing but the circumference of this circle. So that will be 2 pi r divided by the speed of the electron. Let us say the speed is v. 
Now we know that V is equal to R into omega that is speed is equal related to the angular velocity. So V is equal to R into omega where omega is angular velocity. And what is angular velocity? Angular velocity can be written as 2 pi f where f is the frequency. So therefore my time period t becomes equal to 2 pi r divided by r into 2 pi f. So r 2 pi everything gets cancelled. So this time taken becomes equal to 1 by f. Therefore we say that the current produced will be equal to E divided by T where T is 1 by F. So this will be I is equal to E into F. So what is E? That is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. And what is frequency? Frequency is 6.8 into 10 to the power 15. So this comes out to be 1.088 into 10 to the power minus 3 amperes. So this would be the equivalent current in this case. Why we considered only one electron here? Because in case of hydrogen there is only one electron which revolves around the nucleus. Right? So let us look at the next problem. This problem says that in a discharge tube the number of hydrogen ions drifting across a cross section per second is 1 into 10 to the power 18. In a discharge tube, the number of hydrogen ions drifting across a cross section per second is 1 into 10 to the power 18. While the number of electrons drifting in the opposite direction across another cross section is 2.7 into 10 to the power 18 meter per second. If the supply voltage is 230 volts, what is the effective resistance of the? So that means it is somewhat like this. Let us suppose you have a discharge tube. I am just considering it as some area. Okay. So here the number of hydrogen ions which are drifting across a cross section per second is 10 to the power 1 into 10 to the power 18. So let us suppose these are the hydrogen ions which are drifting this way okay while the number of electrons drifting in the opposite direction across another cross section that means let us suppose the electron drifting along this direction in another cross section is 2.7 into 10 to the power 18 per second the supply voltage is 230 volts what is the effective resistance of the tube now what will be the effective resistance across this discharge tube it will be the voltage applied across the tube divided by the current through the cross section so this would be the current through the cross section right so according to ohm's law effective resistance will be v by i now what will be the total current through the cross section it will be the current through this cross section plus the current through this cross section that means current is charge per unit time and charge is equal to number of electrons into charge on each electron for this cross section plus the number of hydrogen ions plus the charge on each ion right so if these many ions are moving that means that many electrons are also moving in the opposite direction so we can say that this is ne and this is np ne is number of electrons and here np is number of protons Right? So as many if 4 protons are moving here that means 4 electrons will also move in the opposite direction. So we can say that this will be equal to Ne plus Np into charge on an electron divided by T. So this will be equal to what is Ne? Number of electrons is 2.7 into 10 to the power 18. So this is 2.7 into 10 to the power 18. What is Np? That is the hydrogen ions which is 1 into 10 to the power 18. This into E that is charge on an electron which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by time taken. So what is the time taken? It is 1 second because both these terms are defined in terms of 1 second. So this comes out to be 0 0.592 ampere. So this is the amount of current which flows through this 
approach flows through the discharge tube. Therefore, the effective resistance of the tube will be equal to V upon I where V is equal to 230 volts divided by I is 0 0.592 which comes out to be 3.9 into 10 to the power 2 ohms. So this is the effective resistance of the discharge tube. So in this case what we did? We did nothing. The simple, uh, we used the same logic here also. In this case the total current was equal to the total current through both the cross section. In this cross section the electrons were moving. So Ne that is the number of electrons into charge on each electron. Similarly in this cross section the hydrogen ions were moving. So same number of electrons will also move in the opposite direction. So we said Np that is the number of hydrogen ions into the charge on each electron. Right? Okay. So now let us go ahead and look at the next problem. Problem 4 says a wire of resistance 5 ohms is drawn out so that its length is increased by twice its original length. Calculate its new resistance. So initially let us suppose we have a wire of resistance 5 ohms. The length of the wire is L and the area of cross section of the wire is A. What happens later? Later let us suppose that we don't know the resistance. So resistance we have to calculate. The length of the wire is increased by twice its original length. That means the new length becomes original length plus twice its original length. That means the increase is twice. That means if initially it was L, now it is L plus 2L. It is increased by twice. Please understand this statement clearly. Increased by twice means the increase is twice the original length. So the delta is 2L. Therefore the new length will be the original length plus twice the original length. Okay. And what is the new cross-sectional area? So that new cross-sectional area we will calculate now. We know that the volume of the wire will still remain constant. So volume of the wire will remain constant. That means area into length will be equal to the area and length later. So AL will be equal to A dash L dash. So from this A dash will be equal to AL divided by L dash. And what is L dash? L dash is nothing but 3L. So we can write it as 3L. Therefore area becomes equal to A by 3. So A dash we can put it as A by 3. Right? So now we have to calculate the new resistance that is R dash. So R dash will be equal to from the expression for resistance we know that R dash will be rho L dash divided by A dash. So this will be equal to rho into L dash can be written as 3L. A dash can be written as A by 3. So this will be equal to rho L by A into 9. So this is 9 into rho L by A. What is rho L by A? Rho L by A is nothing but this resistance R. So this will be equal to 9R. So 9 into R is 5 ohms. So this is 45 ohms. So the new resistance becomes 45 ohms. The catch in this problem was the length increased by twice its original length. Many students make this mistake that they take the new length L dash is equal to 2L. But please understand it is increased by twice its original length. That means the increase is twice the original length. The increase is 2L. So the new length will be L plus 2L. Right? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.